On today's episode of Undercover Boss, the co-founder and CEO of Philly Pretzel Factory, the country's fastest growing pretzel franchise, goes undercover. By working alongside his employees, he'll find out there's more to the job than just twisting pretzels. And stay with us to witness an emotional encounter with a franchisee that will change our CEO's perspective forever. It's just something's wrong with our system and it has to be fixed. I really should have done a better job. And how will employees react when they find out his true identity? Dan Dizio, CEO and uh, co-founder of Philly Pretzel Factory. <laughs> surprised? Extremely surprised. Tune in to find out. Headquartered in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and with 120 stores in East Coast Philly, Pretzel Factory sells more than 100 million pretzels a year, producing $45 million in revenue. And overseeing the 1,700 employees that keep the business baking is the co-founder and CEO, Dan Dizio. I'm Dan Dizio, CEO and co-founder of Philly Pretzel Factory. Philly pretzels are located in eight states, and their states being mostly Pennsylvania, which sells six times more than other states. Some people say Philadelphians eat six times more pretzels than anywhere on the country. It's a real cultural thing. People love pretzels in Philly, and Philly pretzels provide great quality pretzels. Dan was born in Philadelphia, and when he was 11, he lost his dad to cancer, which was very hard on the family. When they say he passed away, you don't realize that he's never coming back. He then started to sell pretzels after getting permission from his mom, and he sold them in street corners, splitting the profit with the owners. The owners were impressed, and they asked him to partner up again, and this went on for a while, and at some point, there were about 50 kids selling pretzels in the city. After graduating college, him and his roommate both hated their 9-to-5 job, so Dan proposed to quit their job and open a pretzel bakery together, and they invested everything they had and started the first store in 1998. By 2004, they were opening one new store every year, but someone advised them to start franchising, and from then on, the company started to grow very rapidly, now reaching 120 franchisees. Dan is proud of what he has accomplished so far, but he believes that there's still room to grow, so he wants to go undercover to see how the stores are run from the inside and if their franchisees are doing a good job. He'll be going undercover as Michael, a data entry processor who's swapping his job for a show called Job Swap, where contestants try out new jobs every day and his employees will be asked to rate his performance and if he's good enough to do their jobs. For his first job, he travels to Bridgeton, New Jersey to work with a franchisee. Today I'm in Bridgeton, New Jersey. I'm here to work undercover with a franchisee. And this store in particular has been underperforming and Dan wants to find out why. He meets up with Bill and he takes him on the road for a delivery and from their first task, Dan sees that Bill might be spending more than he's actually getting when he's doing deliveries. Successful for some franchisees, but what he brought in, maybe delivering four dollars worth of pretzels, maybe it cost him five dollars. For their next task, Bill shows Dan how to make pretzel rolls, which is something they don't sell, but Bill says that their business was down, so he came up with things to help the business survive, but this really frustrates Dan as they're selling something other than pretzels. It drives me nuts when I go into stores and they're not even following the system, they're doing their own thing, and if they're not going to follow it, we really don't want them in the franchise system. While working together, Bill notices Dan seem familiar, and he asks his wife if she finds him familiar too, and they then ask him if he knows Dan, or if he is his brother, but he plays dumb and it seemed like they were buying it. But after a while, he gets uncomfortable lying to their faces, and he reveals his true identity. Hard to stand there and lie directly to someone, so I just couldn't take it anymore, I had to break my cover. Well, it is me, by the way. He tells them he wasn't happy with them selling other products, and they tell him that their business has been so bad, and that they've been taking loans just to keep running it, and they haven't even paid their rent yet. And you work so hard, and then you can't pay your bills. It's hard. And they also tell him that they tried to reach out to him for help, but they were actually ignored by him. Chat with Dan. We needed solutions for our sales. Nothing came out of it. This really hurt him and got him emotional, as he thought of himself as always being there for his franchisees, but he's clearly been neglecting one of his oldest franchisees. Without even thinking about it, he feels like he's let them down and apologizes to them, and he then tells them that he'll help before leaving. And we gotta step in there and figure out a way to keep the doors open, okay? The next day he travels to Broomall, Pennsylvania to work as an assistant manager. I'm in Broomall, Pennsylvania. 
I'm here to train with the baker. And he meets Marques at 5 in the morning. Marques teaches him how to make a pretzel, but just to throw him off, Dan does a less than perfect job even though he knows how to make the perfect pretzel. I've twisted millions of pretzels in my day, so I do know how to make perfect pretzels. I don't want to get busted again. The next one will be better, you know? But Marques helps him improve them. Later, he gets to meet Marques's two daughters who came to say hi before going to school. This is Brooklyn. Say hi, Mike. Hi, how you doing? Your daddy's training me how to make pretzels. Cause I'm not that good. And he also learned that Marques works long hours to be able to support his family, and he's got ambitions to own his own store. He also learns that he might be leaving the company soon, as he's gotten an offer from another company with better pay. For his next job, he goes to downtown Philadelphia to work as a delivery man. Today I'm in downtown Philadelphia. I'm here today to train undercover making pretzel deliveries. He meets up with Gino and they make deliveries around the city. And Gino is great with customers and also has a great energy. Gino is not a huge guy. And for him to walk around the city all day carrying those pretzels, uh, I was pretty impressed. On their break, he learns that Gino is in debt because of school loans and is working extra hours to pay for it. For his last job, he travels to Absica, New Jersey to work as Philly E, the mascot. Today I'll be working undercover in Absica, New Jersey. He meets up with Billy and he gets him in the mascot suit and shows him how to do the mascot dance. Dan was a little stiff but gets into it more as time goes by. Later he takes pictures with fans and gives free coupons and he also learns that he's a student and wants to be a police officer one day. But now he works two jobs and goes to school in order to support his family. And finally, Dan's undercover time has come to an end, and he invites his employees to reveal his true identity. A first in was Billy, and he tells him that he was a great trainer, and offers him a $10,000 payment so he can train other mascots in the next convention. He then gives him a total of $20,000 so he can help his family, and also pay for his school tuition. This is definitely gonna change my life. My parents are just gonna be proud. <laughs> Thank you. I Next in was Gino, and he tells him that he was a great employee, and because his work has safety issues, he tells him that he's bought a loading dock so the delivery workers have easy time loading their product, and also be safe while doing their jobs. He then offers to pay his school loans, and tells him to follow his dreams. I really hope you follow your dreams. Thank you. Thank you. Next in was Bill, and he asks for forgiveness and tells them that he will test the pretzel rolls and if they are liked, it will be implemented everywhere. He then offers to send him a business trainer from corporate so he can help them, and he then tells them that he's buying him a new delivery van so he doesn't have to use his beat up car, and offers to pay their rent for the next year. I want to buy you a brand new delivery van, and I'm going to wrap it with the Philly Pretzel Factory logo so everybody in town knows who you are. Last in was Marques, and he tells him that the store was struggling before he came in, and that he doesn't want to lose him, and tells him that he'll be putting $50,000 for his daughter's college fund, and offers to give him a franchise so he can have his own business. We have a, a new kiosk version of our stores. I'm going to put up all the money and open up a business together.